Hey everybody, welcome back to another video with the High Mountain Homestead. I've gotten this request a few times uh, from some subscribers and commenters on the channel. And that is describing, you know, what are all the various terms that people use when they're talking about sheep. So I figure I'm going to use today where it's got this fresh snow on the ground and really nothing else to do uh, nothing else going on in the homestead to really cover okay so as much as possible I want to show you some of the things that I'm talking about here but that might not, not always be possible um, so I'll do my best if anything you'll get a lot of film of of what the sheep look like on this awesome snowy day okay let's start off by talking about the gender related terms for sheep so um, you basically have ewes and rams and there's a few other words that I'll slam in there uh, you can see this dude straight in front of me is our ram right now I think everyone's covered although we're gonna keep him here for another few weeks and then um, and then you've got the ewes here so a few specific terms uh, when a ewe is a mother she's called a dame and when a ram is a father, he is called a sire. <clears throat> Some other ram-specific terms are, if it's a castrated ram, it's not called a ram, it's called a weather. And if it is a young ram, so a ram under a year, it is a lamb, sorry, a ram lamb, or a lamb ram. Um, this, this dude right here actually... Uh, is I think only nine months old so he is a ram lamb and then uh, stud uh, so that's pretty typical not necessarily specific to sheep but the the ram that is showing exceptional quality uh, great top line great neck um, solid build out uh, like this dude has even though he's young <coughs> and the stud is what you use to breed with he doesn't have a name or else I'd talk to him. Uh, plus he's not my sheep, so I can't like give him a name. Okay, and then a casual term for a ram is buck. And uh, that comes from uh, goats, I think, you know, because uh, there's billies and bucks over there. So uh, I've heard buck in the, in the ram sense as well. Okay, let's talk about ages, okay? So, um, we're all very familiar with with lamb the and there's some differing opinions on there especially if you're in a commonwealth nation or not but a lamb is essentially anything under a year so this lady uh right in front of us who's uh still holding on to some of last year's hair uh, she is not a lamb but her daughter back here is a lamb uh, so her daughter i think this this girl's 10 months old almost 10 months old so what is it called when you are are not a lamb? Uh, well, basically just you and ram, essentially. Uh, however, some people call that year between one and two a yearling. And so uh, she would be a lamb in the back. She would be a yearling. Lamb, lamb, ram, and my other yearling. Now there's another term specific to wool sheep uh, or at least I've heard it specific to wool sheep. It's used in a lot of Commonwealth nations uh, called hogget, which sounds like a pig term, right? Um, hogget is a British term that means the sheep is not yet shorn. Ah, the classic disgusting mating ritual of the ewe peeing and the ram. Okay, that is actually something else that I wanted to talk about because uh, breeding is the next... Uh, area that I wanted to cover and pregnancy term so see what he did with his mouth right there uh, I always pronounce this wrong it's like the Fleming response Flamen response what that is is so sheep actually have uh, in between their both rams and ewes have this because I've seen them both do it um, rams obviously more so than others but basically they have a gland uh, an organ on their top lip, sorry, inside of their mouth, in between their teeth and their lips, that is essentially, uh, it can smell hormones in the air. So what we just saw was the 
Fleming, Fleming response. And it's basically them picking up hormones. So uh, if a ram is doing that, uh, especially if you don't know that ram, uh, things could get interesting with either you with either you as the shepherd or you as in the you. Um, so just, just be on the lookout. He's kind of a... I've actually already seen him cover her. Um, it's not to say he won't do it again, but uh, he's been here for over a month, so I think he's pretty well spent, <laughs> at least with that you. Okay, let's go on to some more breeding and pregnancy terms. Um, so there is something called the ram effect, and uh, I didn't get it as strong this year as I would have thought to, but basically what that is is, you know, I, I run ewes uh, throughout the year, and then I bring a ram in. <clears throat> so the ram effect is basically when they all, when all these ewes have not, you know, seen a man for so many months, uh, that they basically all cycle up and uh, start cycling at the same time. So what that is called is uh, estria, estrus. Basically, that's, that's uh, their time when they can get pregnant. Okay, and then I mentioned it actually earlier in this film. Another term is covered or covering. So right now this ram is covering these ewes. It basically means um, he was with them for at least one full uh, estrus cycle, uh, which I like to play it safe, and I, I like to keep the ram as long as I can, so we're actually going to have him for three cycles. And then, uh, and then there's gestation, which is uh, pregnancy, which uh, for sheep is a uh, good rule of thumb. Are we going to see something? So he's kind of doing it again right now. I feel like I should back away, but I'm not really afraid of this ram. He's never tried anything with me, plus he's probably like 100 pounds, which uh, still wouldn't be fun to get hit. His dad's name is Rowdy, so I call him RJ, Rowdy Jr. I'm going to step back from RJ for a minute. <clears throat> okay, um, another breeding or pregnancy term is hybrid vigor. And what hybrid vigor is, is that is essentially where uh, you have two pure breed uh, sheep and their offspring grow faster, is, is hybrid vigor. It's not 100% of the time. Um, I think for sheep that's true most of the time. My wife pays a lot of attention to rabbit genetics, and I guess uh, sometimes it works with rabbits, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not here to talk about rabbits, we're talking about sheep. But that's what hybrid vigor is. Okay, let's talk about the product side of sheep. So, famously, you know, sheep are known for their wool. However, my sheep are hair sheep, which is code name for meat. These are meat sheep. The Dorper are famous uh, for their for their meat, which I can attest to. Absolutely delicious. So, uh, but let's start about the the fiber side of the product, which again, these are not renowned for, uh, and that is wool. So. Uh, these are hair sheep, and I want to clear something up. Uh, I don't know the answer to this. Like, the stuff that's on this gal's back that hasn't come off yet, do you call that wool or do you call that hair? Uh, I've, heard, I've heard it go either way, so I don't know if I can really weigh in on that. But if it is wool, it is very um, poor quality wool, essentially. It's not, it's not good quality because these are dorper hair sheep. Now, let's talk about fleece. I was actually just educated on what fleece is by definition as I was doing this video here. Fleece, I thought, was uh, the first shear off of a lamb for some reason. Uh, and maybe that might be like a slang term. But uh, fleece is just the wool from any single sheep. So I find that interesting. Um, so I don't totally know the distinction but from what I've read sh uh, wo sorry fleece is the wool from any single sheep let me also talk about lanolin so lanolin oil is not something that is specific to sheep um, but it is uh, 
stay back, dude. Um, but it is famous for uh, making that gamey, kind of greasy taste that so many people complain about when they have lamb for the first time. And it's because they're eating a sheep that was bred for wool. So lanolin oil is something that essentially lubricates and softens the fleece or the wool on a sheep. And that's great for for wool producers, but in a scenario like mine, you actually don't want that. The reason is because um, that lanolin has to, it doesn't just get produced in the wool, it gets produced in the body and in the muscular uh, areas, which is the meat that you eat. And so that lanolin oil is actually what produces that greasy, gamey taste. So that is what lanolin oil is. While we're talking about the product side of it, let's, let's transition over to meat side of it. So uh, I have a separate video. I'll, I'll link it uh, right here. Look in the top left, let's just say, and uh, click that link so you can read that. But um, that goes over all the bene- or all the different uh, ways you can talk about the meat product side of it. But essentially, uh, there's lamb and there's mutton. Uh, lamb, uh, by U.S. standards, is anything under two years. In more Commonwealth nations, it's usually anything less than a year. And mutton is anything over two. Or over one if you... No, sorry. In a Commonwealth nation, yearling or hogget is uh, a yearling. But in the U.S., uh, we just call that lamb. Which, by the way, that's a terrible product name. Um, I, I find so many people that I talk to, they're like, oh, I couldn't eat lamb. It's a, it's, it's a baby. And it's like, well... they Like, I've seen rams try to, like, mate at like three and a half months so you know three times that age i don't know if i would really call that a baby still um like to put it in perspective this dude right here prime processing age uh for lamb you know he's stud quality so he's our stud this year and then look at this gal right here so she's a year and a half old you can see a little bit of size difference uh but I, th- I think it was a was a bad call for whoever decided to call lamb something or to call sheep meat lamb whereas you know you've got venison for deer and you've got beef for cow and pork for pig and stuff it um, because a lot of people think lamb is veal for sheep and and mutton is the beef word and that's not true okay and finally uh, on the product side of it uh, there's the word called cull and cull is uh, the phrase that you would use to uh, selectively butcher a uh, an animal that is not uh, superior genes essentially is is the nice way to say it Uh, so for example like this gal right here um, she is a great lamb but her mom uh, was not a great mother and i don't have like a huge see what's happening over there I don't have a huge uh, operation here and so I'm trying to start slow and I got more you lambs than I had anticipated and I really like this this daughter as well as this new you that's straight in front of us um, so we culled her mom uh, it it's sad like that was one of the hardest days of, of being in this gig but you do you do what you do okay for the next little bit um, I actually want to talk about lambing Let's go from that sad subject of cull to lambing. Sorry, this dumb gate. I built that, so I can complain about it. Um, I want to go to the barn while we're talking about lambing, okay? So as we're talking about lambing, um, um, there's not many terms that I want to cover because they overlap with a lot of the pregnancy stuff, but um, I want to mention colostrum. Colostrum is not exclusive to lambing or sheep in general. It's something that I think every mammal has, but basically the first few days of milk that are just packed with a lot of nutrients and antibodies um, to fatten up and healthy up the the lambs. Um, I also want to talk about the facilities for lambing. So I'll go to my barn, which I don't have the facility set up right now, mostly just my junk pile but i want to talk about what what it's called um where where you put a lamb uh where where the lamb and the mom spend their first uh few days together i did not make up this word so don't judge me it's called a lambing jug 
Okay, you can also call it a uh, lambing pen. Uh, but basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go on the cheap this year and drive some stakes into the ground. This is just bare earth covered in uh, covered in straw, and uh, slide some pallets into it and basically make four stalls along this wall that, if my math is right, will be about five by seven feet, which sounds compact, but when you see a sheep in there, um, it's not that bad. Okay, and then creep feeding. Um, so picture this. So you're familiar with like a traditional feeder. This one is broke because we put it right by the door and the sheep go in and out the door and my bad. Um, so that's a traditional feeder. What a creep feeder is, is picture something uh, like this gate, uh, or sorry, this fence that is blocking, uh, blocking so the ewes can't get out, but maybe the bottom three tines of that are clipped so a lamb can go through or maybe just a lamb's head can go through and you basically give them a lamb grower or something i don't creep feed um, i feel like the dorpers just give an exceptional meat and their babies pack on that fat really quickly so i don't creep feed a lot of people do okay while i'm in the barn i'm just going to rattle off some quick ones about sheep management so the person who looks after sheep is a shepherd pretty easy um, a group of sheep is called a flock of sheep. I have mistakenly called it a herd of sheep many, many times. Um, technically, it is a flock. Uh, I want to talk about sheep management and grazing real quick. I'm going to come back to that. Um, but I wanted to show you. So this is hay. Or sorry, yeah. <laughs> this is hay. This stuff on the ground is straw. I'm going to get to the more yellow stuff. Yeah, you can see the yellow stuff right here with all my garbage. Um, the difference is... They eat hay, they poop on straw, okay? Um, I say that backwards all the time. It's something I'm still getting used to, but hand straw, different things. Okay, I want to end this video by talking about pasture management. Uh, so let me just talk real quick about, uh, boy, it is bright. Let's talk about some uh, medical terms with sheep. So bloat is very common. Basically what that is is when uh, the sheep uh, get something in their rumen that uh, isn't sitting quite well with them and it over ferments, uh, causes a lot of gas and um, uh, blows up uh, one of the stomach chambers bigger than you would want it to be and in many cases kills the sheep, So, which is very sad. Uh, so a word on that, rumen, um, you know, sheep and cows and deer and goats and a lot of animals like that, they are ruminants, meaning that they have a rumen system, which is a stomach chamber, uh, intricate system of stomach chambers that essentially <coughs> um, is, is the course that they take to ferment their food. And I am actually have a scheduled video to film later this week of, uh, of the ruminant uh, biology, so that'll be cool. Okay, um, drench. So drench is the is an interesting word. Drench basically just means it's it is essentially the uh, the solution that you give to your sheep. It's just kind of like a catch-all uh, supplement and uh, bacteria killer that that you give to your sheep if you suspect that they have bloat. Um, I don't recommend doing drench uh, as a preventative measure. Um, I think a preventative wormer that's better is like some apple cider vinegar. Or you can like uh, if you can get them to take garlic oil. Um, there's a lot of other more natural preventative ones, but the drench is kind of the thing where it's you know the catch-all, let's kill the bacteria kind of thing. So another thing is hoof rot, uh, which just like it sounds like, it's a disease that they get on their hoof. Um, there's a few different varieties that they can have, and the way you treat that is a foot bath or a hoof bath which is just what it sounds like. You put a sheep in the, uh, you put their feet in a, you know, shallow basin of, of water and other cleaning solutions. Okay, an interesting one is uh, ketosis. And you hear that a lot with, uh, you know, popular diet stuff for humans, but with sheep, it's actually quite interesting. You don't want them in ketosis. The reason is because humans and sheep uh, are very different. Like humans evolved off of eating um, a lot of fat, off, mostly off of animals and uh, sheep don't eat 
eat animals. Um, so you actually don't want your sheep in ketosis you, because if they're in ketosis, they're burning the carbs that they've worked really hard to, to build um, and to eat. You know, they spend most of their day eating. Which, speaking of eating, let's start talking about the pasture management, and then that'll be the final section. All right, so on pasture management, I've got snow, but pretend that I don't. Pretend it's grass. <coughs> on a pasture uh, setup, you've got sections uh, where you block them off to graze, and um, a permanent or a temporary section is called a paddock or paddock. And uh, I've got two formal paddocks right now. I'm standing in one, and I've got this right here. This is actually uh, a hog run that I use, uh, but it's got shelter attached to it. So on days where there's a lot of snow on the ground, uh, which today we're getting a good melt already, um, so I might let them out. But I like them in there so they have that, that uh, guaranteed dry spot. So a paddock is a section of the pasture that you rotate them on. Now, rotational grazing is just like what it sounds. You put them here for a month, you put them there for a month and back and forth. <clears throat> There's a lot of different ways to do rotational grazing. So um, rotational grazing is just like it sounds where, you know, you've got them moving uh, on, on some bigger lots, essentially, where uh, you can keep them there for a set amount of time. And then there is mob grazing, which mob grazing is essentially... Uh, a, a rotational grazing system, but it is much more condensed and much more down to a science. Uh, you typically see it, like I've seen it a lot with, with cows uh, when I've heard it talked about, but you can do it with sheep too. What a mob grazing system would be on my setup is instead of, the, instead of these two large paddocks, what I would do is get an electric fence and divide the one that I'm standing in right now to be maybe something like four or five different paddocks, and I would move them frequently maybe like every two or three days um, if I had more sheep it'd be daily obviously but you get what I'm saying here so that is a mob grazing system and then I do the same thing over there and so by the time that they get get done back here uh, they are uh, the grass is good grass is ready to go all right some other uh, pasture terms are uh, forage so forage is basically the catch-all term for the stuff that they eat um, don't call it grass because there should be a lot more than just grass on your pasture. It might not look uh, very different from you to me, but for a sheep, it, you know, the stuff that grows is all very different. Them having a, uh, a nice uh, variety in their diet is actually very, very beneficial for them, just like it is for humans. Uh, so forage could include, you know, grass, alfalfa, uh, you know, some roughage, which is like weeds. Um, winter ryegrass stuff like that okay and then a feedlot so a feedlot is um, not something that I do year-round um, and I wouldn't if I didn't have this thing called snow but a feedlot is kind of like what we have going on right here uh, where they yeah look at that man All that water dripping down his face um, the feedlot is basically like what we have going over here. It's, uh, it's highly trafficked, which, by the way, when I don't have snow on the ground, they're on these other places. You can see all the sheep prints. They were, they were just here this morning, but it snowed overnight, so I put them here. Um, a feedlot is essentially a concentrated area where, where they get feed. Um, usually feedlot implies that they're being fed grain or a grain-hay uh, combo. My sheep, uh, you can see it back there maybe I put I put their bucket of of hay back there because I want them to when they eat I want them to eat on consistently dry areas but um, so my feedlot if you even can call it that um, they're just eating hay that's not the typical case okay and then finally uh, cud so cud is a super interesting thing see this girl uh, she hasn't gone back there and eaten in a long time but she's chewing so what is she chewing uh same with this girl right there they're chewing cud and what cud is 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 they eat this grass substance and as they walk and move and sometimes sit still basically they're it's helping them digest it and part of the digestion process is they vomit a little bit of it up and chew it again so if you ever heard the phrase chewing the cud yeah she's doing it too great timing girls uh <laughs> 
to be chewing the cud. Um, it, it's basically where they, you know, re-chew the food, uh, let it ferment a little bit, let the enzymes in their saliva uh, help them digest it a little bit more, and then bam, it goes back down into the stomach chambers for processing. Well, look at that. As always, my video was three times as long as I thought it was going to be. It kind of turned into more of a uh, essentials of, of sheep video. But I hope it was beneficial for you. If it was, give it a like. Uh, give it a comment. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I'd love to see you again on an upcoming video. But for right now, I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead, and I hope to see you on that next video.